subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. Hello and welcome to the print. I have with me today Mr. Syed Akbaruddin. He is the Dean of the Kautilya School of Public Policy and of course we all know him as former ambassador of India to the UN in New York. Welcome to the print sir and thank you for giving us the time. Uh, thank you very much, Nainima. It's a pleasure to interact with you in a different world. And uh, during the time that we haven't engaged, I want to compliment you for the wonderful work you've done most recently in Afghanistan for the courageous efforts you put in. So all the best to you and my compliments. Thank you so much. Sir. It really means a lot. Um, so, so to quickly come to your book, uh, as you are aware, this is called The Page Turner, where we bring out some of the interesting snippets from a book. Um, and in your book, we really faced a lot of difficulty because every page had so much in it. Um, and it is such a page turner in the truest sense. But to come to the main crux of the book, so first, uh, the title, India versus UK, the story of an unprecedented diplomatic win. Uh, the subject that you've selected is, is also quite unique. Uh, uh, you've given a lot of talk on the book, but what I would like to know, and so our readers and, and the print viewers is that, uh, how uh, sort of difficult or easy for you to understand the nuances that you know goes into uh, winning this kind of difficult uh, chances or opportunities at a big and a humongous body like the UN? What would you have to say on that? Um, you're right. The UN is a body which is full of rules and processes and procedures. Um, so it's important for diplomats to not only know the substance, but to also understand the processes and procedures. Uh, in that, we were lucky that um, while most people were away during the summer vacations at the UN, uh, all our mission staff uh, did a lot of research. Now, usually diplomats are not supposed to do research. Nobody thinks of us as academics. But there is a lot of academic input that goes into diplomatic planning. And uh, for several weeks, we worked on understanding the procedures because it's a very complex election. It's not an election that you can win by being first past the post or by getting the highest number of votes. In fact, it's an election you only win when somebody else loses. So everybody is actually trying to make somebody lose and only then do they win. Um, so it's an unusual election. We did a lot of homework. Um, so when it came to the crux uh, of uh, India versus UK, we were simply better prepared for what was in store. We had seen the trend lines, we had analyzed the past, and we were confident that the position that we were in would lead to victory. That was not what the rest of the world saw. In fact, Everybody used to tell me that, look, you are behind the UK in the Security Council. Uh, they are getting nine votes, you are getting six votes. But for example, we had looked up all the past experiences and found that every time the country that leads in the General Assembly eventually wins. And that's what happened even in this case. So if I can summarize, processes, rules, history is all important in diplomacy. and. Preparing for this election, we did all the right things. Uh, that's why um, it was a victory, which nobody thought would happen. But uh, that's why I termed it as unprecedented, because it never happened in 70 years and perhaps may not happen for a long, long time again. Mm -hmm. Well, for the benefit of our viewers, uh, this book is actually about the successful uh, election of Justice Dalvir Bhandari to the International Court of Justice. It might uh, look like uh, to a lot of us probably that, oh, we read the news at that time in 2017, we know everything, but frankly, we don't. And after reading your book, it becomes so much more exciting. Uh, so to, so to let me now ask you some of the uh, important revelations uh, that you've done in the book, especially on the fact that how um, 
a former UK foreign secretary who's now the prime minister, Boris Johnson, calling uh, Madam Sushma Swaraj, uh, late Sushma Swaraj, she's, she was this uh, such a wonderful excellent affairs minister and our excellent affairs minister now, Mr. Jay Shankar, he was the foreign secretary then. And the conversation between both of you that why she should not pick up that phone call from Boris Johnson and eventually UK withdrew their candidate. Uh, can you uh, let us go through that, Saka? Can you tell us what happened? and and later on, when now, I mean, they have also read the book, uh, were there any uh, sort of hard feelings or they also understood that everything is fair in a place like UN where you have to promote your own interest, your country's interest? So you're right. Um, the story of uh, 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 the external affairs minister, Simiti Sushma Swaraj, and her willingness to lead from the front is one of the highlights of that book. Um, she was always there for us as diplomats. Uh, we could call her at any time of the day or night. And the um, anecdote you're referring to actually refers to late in the night in, uh, in New Delhi. I think it was something like 11.30 or so in the night. However, having worked with her and uh, known that she wouldn't mind being disturbed, uh, even if it was so late, I took the gamble because I felt that if there are difficult decisions in a negotiation, it's useful for somebody less than at a top level to make those difficult uh, responses. Um, we were, in by all estimates, uh, in a situation where we thought we would win. However, there were many, many uh, options available, including perhaps sharing the seat. And I could understand UK as, uh, as a country, which was in this instance, um, finding it more difficult, would opt for such options. They had suggested a joint uh, mechanism, which we rejected. The other option, of course, would have been, why don't we share? We are good friends. Let's work it out, etc. Uh, that said, uh, since we were in a winning position, I felt that we should not have an uh, arrangement of this sort. And it's always difficult for the minister to say no to another minister. Uh, whereas, for diplomats at a lower level, we are used to saying no, we are used to the fighting, so to say, in the trenches. Um, and therefore, I requested her. To her credit, she could have just brushed me aside by saying, uh, no, I, I know him well, I would like to uh, talk to him. But she understood uh, the gravity of the situation and immediately said, all right, I have followed and listened to you so many times. This is one more chance I'm ready to listen to you. Perhaps, I don't know, maybe uh, the then Foreign Secretary, Mr. Boris Johnson, may only have been calling to say that, okay, Shushma, we give up. I don't know. Only he knows what was in store. But just as in the heat of battle, we all do all sorts of things. And that's why I took the conservative path of saying, don't talk and let me do the difficult uh, job and uh, we will see later. And to her credit, uh, she allowed us to grow, uh, she allowed us to take risks and to think big when this was not um, an easy thing to do so. Because everybody was saying, let's work it out, let's have a deal. Nobody has ever defeated a permanent member. What do you think you can do? It's never happened in the past. Why do you think it will change, etc., etc. But she read the tea leaves correctly. She understood the trajectory well and credit to her that she allowed us both, uh, Mr. Jay Shankar, then the Foreign Secretary and me to uh, go on a path uh, which was at that stage certainly uh, uh, not without risk. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's fascinating, sir. But um, to also understand after hearing uh, you what you said, how important it is when such important incidents come up. And you are also there in the thick of things when uh, Masood Azhar was listed. And uh, I remember how we sort of harassed you day and night for stories and other things. But 
but you you were there you were in the pulse of things and those difficult days that were there so on incidents like this how important it is and whether that practice is still continuing to work as a team as you said uh, minister listened to you and you were also in, in constant conversation with uh, uh, with uh, minister jay shankar who was then the foreign secretary so how important it is to work as one team and i'm sure you were also uh, in conversation with justice uh, dalvid bhandari at that point of time uh, so do you think that uh, that is something that other countries they also watch the un watches how united they are so you're right um, all diplomacy but certainly plurilateral and multilateral diplomacy is about teamwork yeah. it's not about lone rangers however powerful a country may be it's not a field that lone rangers will track uh, you need to have uh, extensive network of friends but also all working on the team should be on the same page in fact uh, the new technologies which are now in vogue help us if we were 30 or 40 years ago where communication would have been difficult all of us would not have been on the same page instantly today platforms are available where uh, in one go i could communicate with all my team saying this is what happened at a certain stage we could communicate they in turn would communicate with their um, uh, interlocutors and globally we were able to instantly uh, engage with everybody um, so the communications revolution has changed the importance and emphasis on teamwork and without teams uh, lone rangers cannot uh, win Uh, in this context just one last point uh, responding to what you asked me last time and i forgot to answer was how did the uk respond to this now just to tell you last week i had an engagement with the uk foreign office where they discussed this whole book and the responses that each of us had taken to understand better where they had uh, scored where they had fallen short uh, so among friends it's normal in the heat of the battle we go at each other um uh, to the best of, of our abilities but then we stand back and learn that's what diplomacy is about and the uk and india have excellent relations and as i told you on the 15th i had this one hour exchange with them to understand better how we approach this and to uh, take home from them how they felt they felt short in certain areas sure sir that was wonderful uh, talking to you the book uh, india versus uk the story of an unprecedented diplomatic win and i believe sir for the future generation of uh, uh, i mean foreign officers it will be quite a learning experience to learn from them because i'm sure they'll be faced with more such difficulties so just your uh, parting shot on that sir you're absolutely right um, stories need to be uh written and told otherwise uh, events um orally conveyed tend to um, uh, very quickly fall into disuse uh, so one of the reasons why i wrote this book was to record what had happened what we did correctly what we didn't do so correctly it's important for institutions that stories uh, whether good or not so good are recorded so that the next generation benefits from that so that there is greater transparency and better understanding of situations uh, and what went right and what went wrong uh, and so um, good institutions always have good stories to tell thank you so much sir you please take care and thank you for talking to the print thank you very much nayan thank you